What is going on everybody? It is the Phantom Michael bringing you the second half of this collaboration series. This is part two of the Pokemon USA cross country adventure. If you guys have not seen the first half of this video, be sure to look at the link in the description to Professor Wormwood's channel. Now if you're asking, hey, what is the Pokemon USA cross country adventure? Well, it is this awesome project that Professor Wormwood is spearheading where we take specific states and we utilize them and pretend like they are their own region in the Pokemon world. So if you look at the first episode that is over on Professor Wormwood's channel, you're going to see how the Pokemon ecosystems interact with each other and how the Pokemon live in the state of Florida. Now over on my channel, you are going to see how the state would actually function as a region, the locations of the gyms, and uh, maybe where you're going to find some Pokemon. Alright you guys, well, welcome to the video. Alright you guys, you need to have a couple things when you have a Pokemon region. So you need to know where the starting town is going to be, where your gyms are going to be at, and where the Elite Four is going to be. So now looking at the actual state of Florida, if we assume that it could function as its own independent region, where would those cities be at? And where would the Pokemon League be? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at that, shall we? We decided to pick Pensacola as our starting town because it is fairly small but isn't exactly in the middle of nowhere either. In fact, its history with the military could make it a great place for the kinds of resources needed to run a Pokemon lab effectively. Plus. It's near the northern border of the state, so it could easily open a pathway up for travel downwards towards Miami, which we picked as the state of Florida's regional league, namely the location of the Elite Four and where the champion is going to reside. From there, we charted a path over to Panama City, Tallahassee, Jacksonville, Gainesville, Orlando, Tampa, St. Petersburg, and finally Cape Coral before arriving in Miami. We chose these cities in particular not just because of their decent size, but also because they form a fairly strong linear path and they have so much to offer for your travelers. Now, having the Florida Pokedex completed is one task on its own, but we decided to go one step further and we wondered if there was any chance that the state might have its own unique set of regional variants, and we figured out at least one set of possibilities for the state. Specifically, the Floridian Magikarp family. We decided on this with help from a friend of mine by the name of Clonatos, because the specific type of carp that exists in the waters of Florida is the grass carp, which has a distinctive green coloration to it. We decided to keep Magikarp very much the same in its type assignment and moveset for the most part, but the overall look of the creature and its abilities and moves do change a little, with it gaining Sap Sipper as a base ability and having access to Leech Seed at level 1. Once it evolves though, well, that's when things get interesting. Here is the design we came down to for Floridian Gyarados. This creature can basically be summed up in two words, Swamp Gyarados. It is Water Grass type with Intimidate as its base ability and Strong Jaw as its hidden ability, and its look draws inspiration from a number of sources. First of all, the mat of green grass on its back and green scales are there for the sake of camouflage as we believe this variation is likely an ambush hunter, much like the alligators that roam the same waters as it, allowing it to blend in and use this covering along with their brown face to pretend to be a log and or mat of algae so it can sneak up on others, lying in wait for prey to stumble too close to them. The brown wooden look of their face was inspired by the figureheads that could be found on the bows of Spanish ships specifically the kind that may have existed on the ships of the conquistadors that effectively founded the land that eventually became the state of Florida for Europeans. The horrifying face and red eyes of the beast was inspired by the basilisk, as seen in media like Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, and we believe this would also likely give the creature access to moves like scary face, mean look, and glare to emulate the creature's petrifying stare. As for its behavior, again drawing inspiration from the large native predatory reptiles of the area, these creatures are seemingly more placid than their traditional counterparts, but that's only because they have an explosive temper. Though they can take a lot of mental punishment and irritation, once things reach a boiling point for them, they will lash out with ten times the ferocity and fury that a normal Gyarados displays, attacking everything and anything near them, friend and foe alike, 
and it can take a tremendous deal of effort to even begin to calm them down. With access to attacks like Power Whip and Wood Hammer at their disposal, and slightly reduced base special attack and special defense stats in exchange for slightly higher base attack and defense stats, this makes these creatures a terrifying force to behold, and more than enough reason to always pay attention to your surroundings when moving along any body of water within the state. Lastly, given what we know about the state now, we can determine what types of known starter Pokemon in the state would best fit here from traditional standards. For our grass type starter, we have selected Chikorita. While Chikorita and Grookey can both be found in Florida, Grookey generally would survive better only in the northern part of the state, whereas Chikorita's form and the types of herbs it is based on can be found throughout the state. And, biologically speaking, since they can survive in both temperate and tropical environments, they could thrive in either end of the state, making it easier for them to be acquired and in turn distributed to new trainers with little issue. For our fire type starter, we have Litten. This one really wasn't that tough to pick, as the state is home to millions of stray cats of all sorts. And since Litten would blend right in with such hordes, it is easy to pick for the slot. That and their fully evolved form Incineroar would be right at home with the fighting organizations that are based in the state, from UFC to WWE. And lastly, for our water type starter, we have... Well, come on guys, it's toted out, clearly. We all saw that coming. Alligators in Florida go hand in hand, and while there are other starters um, that fit in the water category, such as Mudkip and Squirtle, Totodile is just such an iconic Pokemon, plus it being a Caiman, and Caimans and Alligators are hand in hand. Totodile is literally the best starter choice for Florida. Granted, this selection is a bit heavy on physical fighters, but if needed, Totodile could be swapped with your Squirtle or even a Mudkip to make it a more balanced selection, but that's ultimately up for you to decide. I want to thank you so much for watching this video. If you guys have not already, be sure to look down below in the description and go to Professor Wormwood's channel to check out the other part of this episode. Thank you guys so much. I've been the Phantom Michael. I'm going to get the heck out of here and I will see you guys in the next one.